How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? We got to liven this place up a little bit. Hi, everybody over there. And Fran Bogle, I'm from Morbcom. We're going to talk about convergence today. Uh, listen, we're going to give you a little bit of a spin from the industry we're in. Uh, we're in the IoT space, and convergence is something that, that's happening real time with what we do. I know everybody in this room is waiting for the convergence of cellular networks with uh, non terrestrial networks. That's what really the summit's about. Um, but, you know, that's great. At Orbcom, we're a big believer in convergence. We've actually been selling converged satellite and IoT, uh, satellite and cellular uh, IoT solutions to our customer base for uh, well over a decade. And we're really excited about the opportunity. We think the opportunity is huge. Uh, we've built out uh, our business to over 2 million subscribers. And they're spread out uh, uh, amongst our uh, proprietary satellite network and over 500 cellular networks worldwide. Now, what have we learned from those 2 million subscribers and from our customers? What we've learned is they really don't care about the network. I know that's probably hard for a lot of us in this room to hear. A lot of us in this room probably wake up every day thinking about networks, but they really don't care. Actually, there, there is one time they care. At the end of the month, when they get their bill, they care about the network. So I think we can all agree on that. But literally, customers don't care. They don't care if their data transmits uh, in the air, on the ground, or under the sea, as long as they are connected. And at Orbcom, look, we have a front row seat to our IoT customers and our partners and their demand for data increasing, their demand for connectivity increasing every single day. And we hear from them the, the need for convergence and how it will influence their business operations. And what are the reasons behind that? It's uh, probably what you would expect. They're looking for uninterrupted connectivity for their mission critical data. They're looking to use cellular networks because they're economical, they're widely available, but they want the ability to be able to fall back when they're out of cell coverage. And then finally, they wanna be able to reach beyond the uh, terrestrial network to reach some of the most remote places on earth. So let's talk about the opportunity. I know um, the wireless providers here are working. Uh, we heard the panel talking earlier uh, around 3GPP standards and the satellite players are jockeying for position to align their services to meet those standards uh, and to, for their services to meet uh, the wireless providers needs. Again, the panel just talked about that. Look, convergence is a dream. It is the dream at least for us at Orbcom. Um, but I want to share with you, it's not widely adopted yet. I told you we've been selling some form of converged solutions to our customer base for over a decade, but it's not widely adopted yet. It's really an economical thing, but I don't see that as a problem. I actually see that as an opportunity. As we strive for the perfectly converged world, I'm gonna tell you and show you examples of where our industry is going and why we're super excited for the opportunities that Convergence can bring to us. Um, and I'll just clear you in. I think the opportunity is huge for everybody in this room. So who are we? Who is Orbcom? Okay, um, you can say we're pioneers uh, in the IoT space. We've been in business for over 30 years and we started 30 years ago uh, with a constellation of low earth uh, satellites. That constellation was the first approved uh, for IoT. Uh, back then it wasn't called IoT, it was actually called M to M or machine to machine communications. But that's how long we've been in IoT. We were doing it before they called it IoT. So how about that? Um, since then we've launched a lot of satellites and we currently maintain a constellation, the only constellation that's fully dedicated to IoT in the industry. Um, little 
bit of trivia about Orbcom. Uh, fun fact, um, if you all remember when SpaceX uh, launched uh, or successfully landed a rocket back on Earth for the first time uh, in 2015, the payload on that rocket was actually some Orbcom satellites. So that's a fun fact about us. But as we evolved as a company, as we evolved in the IoT space, we saw a lot of opportunity uh, in the logistics and transportation markets. We went out and acquired some telematics providers and we established ourselves as an end-to-end -end, uh, end -end IoT provider. Um, with that said, in, in working uh, in the, uh, in the uh, telematics space, working with logistics uh, customers, we also saw then the opportunity the cellular IoT space could provide for us. And at that point, we went out and established partnerships with some tier one wireless providers, uh, and we became an MVNO for cellular IoT. So we were hitting both sides of, of the fence here. We're a satellite provider, we're a cellular provider for IoT solutions. And, um, We've evolved over the years. Um, again, we have over 2 million subscribers. We're fortunate to have some of the biggest customers in our industry, and we're really, really proud of that. Customers like Walmart, Caterpillar, Hapagloid use Orbcom solutions to monitor their assets, manage their assets through better data. And that's what we do, and we're really proud of that. Okay, so again, I, I'm obviously biased towards the IoT industry, but I do want to make a couple statements around data and how I think in all of our industries, cu customers consume data. You know, and, and a general statement I'll make, I hope you agree, is you connect the customer to data, you give them access to data, the more data they will want. So if I'm giving an example from the consumer side, the average mobile subscriber when the first iPhone came out, how much data did that average subscriber use? Versus today, the iPhone 15, how much data does that same subscriber use? Obviously a massive amount more. In the IoT space and an Orbcom example, uh, when we first got into the telematics industry, we had a solution we sold to our transportation customers that enabled our customers to see their trucks you know, we, at the time, we thought it was gold. We thought it was the greatest thing in the industry, but we had to prove to our customers the ROI. We had to prove to them, well, you know, how the data can help them run and manage their operations better. But once they deployed our solution and they saw their data rolling in, it was amazing what would happen. We would start getting more and more questions from our customers. So it wasn't just about monitoring the trucks. They would say, hey, can you help us see our refrigerated cargo? Could you help us see the temperature in it real time? Could you tell us if our driver is speeding? Could you tell us if our cargo reached its destination? All questions wanting more data and helped us as a company evolve our solutions over time. But again, another example, you give customers data, they want more. You, know, you give customers words, they want pictures. You give them pictures, they want video. You give them video, they want 3D interactive video. So I'm gonna tell you kind of the convergence story from where we're coming from and kind of our journey, right? Again, we started out in the satellite space, evolved into the cellular IoT space. Um, and you know, satellite really started it had a very simple use case we were, were helping monitor and track large equipment, high value equipment that was in very, very remote locations. On the cellular side, again, came up in logistics, trucking, supply chain, those were the use cases. And they were very divided for a long, long time. Then some funny things happened on the, on the, on the uh, satellite side. We started seeing, um, things become not as complicated. We started seeing hardware actually shrink. We started seeing satellite transmissions become faster. We started seeing satellite plans become more economical. And at Orbcom, we're fortunate to have an awesome integration partner 
uh, organization and our, our, our partners really have led us to where IoT is going in a lot of cases. And we started seeing satellite use cases that would blow your mind. We had a partner that uh, actually took fishing buoys, used satellite technology to turn them into smart tuna trackers. We had another partner that was using satellite technology to track wildlife and specifically elephants in Africa. Uh, and then we saw another use case that, that we kept seeing over and over and over again. There were all over the world um, customers that were putting satellite technology on high value cargo because they didn't want to lose visibility of it. They didn't want to risk any kind of theft or getting lost. And we said to ourselves, wow, that's interesting. So we actually took that concept to a lot of our big transportation logistics customers. And some of the biggest players in North America said, you know what, Orbcom, we are interested in being connected all the time. So we actually got into the world of convergence with our transportation customers by selling them a companion satellite device to go with their cellular uh, IoT device we already had deployed. And that's how we got into this world of convergence. Now, why are we so excited about it and where is it going today? Now, the, the example I just gave you and I, I said to you earlier, it's not widely adopted. For an IoT customer to buy two devices from a company like me and have two service plans, it's expensive, right? And, and the economics of that probably uh, inhibited our growth uh, in what we call dual mode or convergence, okay? But fast forward to today, we're really excited about our current roadmap. You know, on our current roadmap, we're taking our mainstream products, okay? And we're gonna have software-defined radio on those products. Our customers will have a choice to activate satellite, activate cellular, or base. Again, what we call dual mode. We think it's a winner for this industry. We think that convergence in IoT and in the, in the sectors we serve, a product like that will bring it to the mainstream. And we're really, really excited about that. All right. Um, look, there's challenges ahead for, for all. Um, you know, I, I do want to point out, um, wait, hold on one sec. But yeah, yeah. Um, look, as, as you all are evaluating partners, look, we're, we're a cellular provider. We are a satellite provider. We are an IoT provider. Um, but we pride ourselves in, in being able to partner with whatever um, our customers need, whatever our partners need. But many of you, especially on the mobile side of things, are going to be evaluating potential satellite partnerships. And there's a lot of new players uh, in the space today, which is great, but you got to do your homework and you got to make sure you're looking out for speed bumps and you got to find the right partner for you. There's a couple of things I want to point out uh, with us being in the, in the satellite space for over 30 years, there's some things that we know. Uh, regulations, number one, I think you heard that earlier in the panel as well. Um, look, I know in the cellular or mobile world regulation is something that you live and breathe every single day. But I want to assure you achieving regulation and compliance in the satellite space is 10 times harder than the wireless world. Okay. So as you're looking at a partner, you got to make sure you completely understand their regulatory map, where they're able to transmit and where they cannot. And does that fit your needs? And if their map doesn't line up to exactly what you want to do, you just need to make sure you understand what their plans are and how fast they will get that regulatory approval that they need. Number two is money. Space is expensive, okay? Launching a satellite is expensive. But more than that, you know, the infrastructure to maintaining a satellite network is, is pretty significant, right? You look at an earth station and the infrastructure that goes into that, you know, you need to make sure your satellite partner uh, has great financial backing, is in great financial standing, and can continue to grow and meet your needs. The third is, is um, excuse me, the, the third is support. Uh, I know everyone here probably has some sort of customer support organization. As you're evaluating bringing on a potential satellite partner, who's going to do the support? Can your team do it? 
or do you need help from your, your, your satellite partner to service your customers? There's no right or wrong answer in that, but as you're evaluating a potential joint offering, you need to have a, a support model that you both feel good about. And finally, this is um, something that's been huge for Orbcom. You know, we're re you know, we have great uh, engineers at Orbcom, great satellite engineers, great hardware engineers. You're gonna hear from one of them later on the panel uh, later today. Um, I told you why and our hardware and our new designs are gonna make an absolute splash in the world's convergence in our space. But having a partner that um, can produce and provide hardware that meets your standards and helps you continue to innovate is very, very key. Look, and finally, look, we, we all have challenges. We're all gonna have challenges in the worlds of convergence. You know, we're excited, but like, look, we know at Orbcom we're gonna have our own challenges, but like anything in telecommunications, um, it requires standards and it requires cooperation. I hope what you heard from me today uh, from what we're seeing in our industry has excited you as to what the opportunity could be. You know, we truly feel that if we can provide uninterrupted connectivity anytime, any place to our customer base, they will want more, they will want more, and they will want more. I hope you can all agree to that. Thank you so much for your time.